Welcome back to The Headache Situation. This is a series of videos intended to help people with headaches. We are not sponsored by any hospitals or drug companies or insurance companies or anyone else who makes money off disease. We are a public service from the Michigan Headache and Neurology Clinic in East Lansing, Michigan, and I'm the medical director. My name is Ed Messina, and I'm a neurologist, a headache specialist, and I suffer from migraines. Sitting in these bright lights, by the way, doesn't help, as many of you already know, but this is worth it. We're going to give you some information today about drug side effects in the headache world. The headache world is interesting because there are many, many different medicines out there, and there are very many sensitive people who get migraines. We notice everything. It's a migraine thing. We're detail-minded. But today, I'm going to start off a three-part series within our big series of videos about side effects of medicines. I want to talk about medication side effects versus allergies versus adverse events, and I'll help explain the difference between these. This will make a difference when you talk to your doctor. When I say doctor, I mean doctor or nurse practitioner or physician's assistant, clinician, but I'll use the word doctor because it's easier to say. I hate the word provider. It's dehumanizing. It's not what we are. Now, this video today is going to talk in general about the idea of side effects and what you need to know about them, and the next two videos will deal with how to find out exactly what side effects to expect, and lastly, on how to deal with drug interactions with the headache medicines. These are all very complicated topics, and each one deserves a separate video. I'm trying not to drive people too crazy with long videos. These are short, so you can think about them. Now, i got to read you a disclaimer. Okay, remember to read the disclaimer at the beginning of this video and one on the Headache Situation website. Basically, all of our videos are intended to be informational and educational and not intended to replace your doctor. Do not make any health decisions based on these videos. The information we're giving you should be very helpful, but you need to apply this when you talk to your physician. These are informational and educational sessions, and I hope you gain a lot from them. But remember, we're not taking the place of your practitioner. All right. So, what's the difference between a side effect and an adverse event? These are important to distinguish for reasons I'll explain. It's like there's a big difference between an allergy and an intolerance. Someone will tell me, oh, I can't stand such and such medicine. It makes me too sleepy. You know, I'm allergic to it. Well, no. Allergies would involve hives, rashes, itching, breathing problems, Maybe a screaming trip in an ambulance to an emergency room because you can't breathe. Those are allergies. Those are allergic reactions. Intolerances are when a medicine produces an effect that you don't like. And it could be constipation or vomiting or sleepiness or dry mouth, whatever. Those are intolerances, and we call those side effects. Okay, so what's the difference between an adverse effect and a side effect? It's an important difference. Adverse effects are not anticipated, or maybe they are, but they're out of keeping with what you'd expect to happen. Now, adverse effects can occur when drugs are used properly and appropriately. Sometimes a drug will have an adverse effect, which is predicted, like the cancer doctors using some of these very toxic drugs for treating cancer, there are certain anticipated things that could happen, and if they do happen, those are adverse effects. You could be innocently taking a simple antibiotic or something like that and break out into a skin rash. That's an adverse effect as well. It's not really a side effect. It's an adverse event. So fine shade of difference, but it's important to us. Now there's side effects. Now side effects are different. They could be foreseen. For example, I could be prescribing a medicine like nortriptyline for prevention of migraine. And I could warn somebody, listen, you know, when you first go on this medicine, take it up slowly because you probably will notice a dry mouth or some morning drowsiness. But give it a couple of weeks because that's probably going to disappear. That's a side effect. And it's not a horrible side effect. Now if it makes you turn purple and grow horns like hellboy, Boy, then that's different. You have to stop the drug. That would be an adverse effect. So side effects, even if you look them up in a book, they might not be so awful. Most people don't get bad problems when they take a medicine. A small number of people do. And we're going to show you in another video how you can actually look up exactly the percentage chance of these things happening to you. So first, I got to give you some background, and that's the purpose of this video. Now, the big mistake is when people go we give them a prescription, they, on the way to the drugstore, they stop and they get on their phone and they start looking up side effects. And they look up every crazy thing online. Everybody who has a blog had some bad reaction to something and they write all about it. No, those are individual people with an individual reaction. It doesn't mean statistically it's likely to happen. Some events can occur maybe out of a, one out of a million people and sometimes one out of 10 people. And it's our job as prescribers to properly inform you before you walk out the door with that prescription. A lot of our 
our patients end up missing out on a good medicine because their friend or the pharmacy printout, whatever, made a big long list of side effects. I'm going to show you a list at the end of this video that'll knock your socks off, and it's for a medicine you'd never imagine could have done that. But what I'm saying is, you got to have a little trust, and be sure when someone's prescribing a medicine to you that they really talk to you about the medicine and explain to you what to expect, and if this happens, if you're a little, I don't know, like I said, dry mouth or a little drowsy in the mornings, so what? It's going to go away. So stick with it because the medicine, the benefit of the medicine will outweigh any annoyances in the short term. We're not asking people to trade their peace of mind or anything else for headache control. No, we're simply saying be on the lookout for some of these minor things because they will disappear. Now you got to be careful of some of these printouts you get from the pharmacies. A lot of times the printouts are made by a company who will uh, simply put a large group of medicines into a single category and say, here's the side effect profile for this category of medicines. For example, example, the tricyclics, uh, you know, they use a lot in headache, and you know, Elevil and Pamela or, you know, amitriptyline, nortriptyline, sometimes protriptyline. Now, if you generalize that group, you'll be very wrong because although amitriptyline can be very sedating in some people, protriptyline is the opposite. In fact, you have to take it in the mornings so it doesn't keep you awake at night. So those generalities on the pharmacy printout are not that helpful. So you got to take them all with a grain of salt. So where does the truth lie? We'll show you later, okay? Sometimes so-called side effects are beneficial. For example, if we're using uh, nortriptyline to prevent migraine and a person, let's say, also has a sleep problem at night, the sedating effect of the nighttime medicine to prevent headaches will probably also improve the nighttime sleep pattern. So people will benefit in more than one way. I got to tell you this funny story. When I was an intern uh, quite a while ago, there was an experimental drug we were using called minoxidil, and it was being used for extreme hypertensive people on the kidney unit, on the renal unit. And uh, it wasn't on the market yet. We had uh, one of our professors was, was doing the clinical trial for it. And we noticed that people getting this drug uh, long term were getting pretty hairy. They were growing hair in places they didn't want to grow hair. So of course, being wiseacre characters as we were, we had, we had a resident who had a balding problem. And we used to kid among ourselves that we should be rubbing minoxidil on his head because maybe he'd grow some hair. Poor guy, he was really embarrassed by it. Well, years later, this drug got turned around a little bit. And of course, it's now known as Rogaine and people rub it on their heads. So you never know. Sometimes a side effect is an effect and we can be using it for some purpose. It's an example of using the other effect or so-called side effect of a medicine to help another person. Purpose. We wonder also about drug interactions. Now, we're going to dedicate an entire video, two videos from now, about drug interactions among the migraine medicines because there are a lot of them. But for now, suffice it to say is that certain medicines will interact with other medicines. How about if the patient doesn't tell us everything they're taking? A lot of women uh, are on birth control pills and I'll say, are you taking any other medicines? And they'll say, nope, no other medicines. And I'll ask specifically, how about birth control pills? And they'll say, oh, well, yes, of course. That's not a medicine. Well, yes, it is. A lot of times people are embarrassed to tell me that they're taking lots of supplements. Now, supplements can interact with other medicines, and some of them are downright dangerous. We have to know everything a person's taking in order to figure out what medicine can be safely prescribed. And there's no shortcut to this. You got to talk to people, which means if you're the patient, your doctor has to talk to you, and they need to spend some time asking you all these questions. It's very important. You can't do it through a vending machine. Now, a lot of medicines, if you look them up, just about every one of them will tell you that nausea and vomiting is a side effect. Well, think about it. Most medicines are taken orally, so there's an increased probability that some of them might upset your stomach. Why not? Now, sometimes we can predict how a person will tolerate a medicine if we know they have a certain genetic disorder. Uh, we went through a phase a couple of years ago when we were doing genetic testing to see which enzymes were present in the liver for certain people so they could detoxify their medicines. It was somewhat helpful, but insurances didn't want to pay for it, and it was expensive, and it really didn't change too much the way we work, because we always start at the lowest dose and taper upward anyway. But it was an interesting step, and I hope in the future we'll have much better genetic testing to lean on. Now, in neurology, we use a term called polypharmacy. A polypharmacy is when a person is on multiple medicines. Some of us will use the term rational polypharmacy, where we think we understand the interactions between their medicines, and we usually do, and we try to avoid things that are known to interact with each other, 
Some things may interact, but we may be aware of them, and it's in a controlled manner if we're using low doses. Again, it boils down to the individual patient. Now, in the midst of all of this, we worry, and I mention all the time, the concept of medication overuse headaches, or so-called rebound headaches. Anybody can take a medicine over-the-counter and thwart anything I'm trying to do with their headache control. They could buy over-the-counter painkillers, over-the-counter so-called headache medicines, and they could throw off my whole treatment plan, and maybe they won't even tell me about it. Maybe they're embarrassed to say, or they just feel so desperate because their headaches are so bad. Over-the-counter meds are not to be trifled with. Now, a patient's age is important, too. As we get older, we lose the abilities to detoxify certain medicines. The liver isn't quite as efficient at breaking down certain compounds, or the kidneys aren't as efficient in removing certain medicines from our bloodstream. So the American Geriatric Society will issue a list called the Beers Criteria, which will tell you which medicines may be inappropriate for people over age 65. Now, I got to tell you, 65 doesn't seem that old to me anymore, but I know that at certain ages, we can't handle certain medicines as well as we did when we were 25. So we have to be really careful. And the Beers Criteria is a guideline, not a law, but it helps guide your physician on what medicines they'd have to think twice about before prescribing to people that are older especially people who have concomitant other conditions like kidney failure, renal failure, heart disease, you name it. There are certain medicines that just can't be used in certain people, and the Beers criteria helps make that decision. There always are exceptions, and it's based on the general health of the patient. Now, sometimes a medication side effect can lead to erroneous diagnoses. For example, a person goes to Dr. A and gets a medicine which causes constipation, and they go to Dr. B who goes, ah, look at this, you're so constipated. We better get some testing done to find out why. Well, probably unnecessary. Now, some drugs interact in a way that you don't expect. Certain seizure drugs can affect the levels of certain birth control pills, and certain thyroid medicines and certain seizure drugs, which are used in migraine, can interact with each other also. And we'll talk about that a little later. But be aware that you got to keep your eyes open, and you got to be sure the prescribing person knows everything that you're taking. Now, foods count too, you know. People like to use turmeric when they make curry. It's probably not a high dose, but people buy it in pills now. It's curcumin or turmeric, and it's been around maybe 3,000 years, and yeah, it's an anti-inflammatory, no question, except it interferes with the body's ability to metabolize certain medicines. The same is true for grapefruit juice and for pomegranate juice. These will interfere with the medicines you're taking, so you must make sure that your prescriber is aware of it. Now, every so often, governments do something that's good for us, and the FDA is an example of that. They're there to pretty much protect us. They're not the most efficient people in the entire world, but they're what we've got, and they are very helpful, and they save lives. The FDA looks at a medicine, looks at the side effects, adverse effects, whatever, and then weighs whether the benefits of the medicine outweigh the downside to it, and that's what gets them through their approval process. On the screen, there's a website which is for the consumers to learn all about medicines and to be able to go into this with their eyes open. There are other websites I'll tell you about later for drug interactions and all that, but this one is very useful. So make a note of it and visit it. See what you think. Now, I'm going to leave you with a real scary example. On the screen here, you'll see a list of side effects that goes on and on and on. Now, this is a medicine you could buy over the counter. In reality, we see very, very rarely any side effects of this type. But look at the list of things that it can do to you. It's scary. It'll knock your socks off. But you know what that drug is? It's Tylenol, acetaminophen. Okay, so remember, adverse events are usually not predicted. Side effects can be predicted, but they don't happen to most people. Most people don't get side effects. Some people do, and they're very benign. But you can't let a list of side effects written down somewhere keep you from trying a medicine. You just have to keep your eyes open. And if these are predictable and benign as your prescriber should tell you, don't stop it. It might be the one that helps you. Also, in low doses, a medicine may be well tolerated or maybe mild side effects which go away, but maybe that's not even going to be your dose. Maybe your dose is going to be a higher dose when it's adjusted. So don't give up. Don't throw out possibly, potentially good medicines. Now, you can get side effects when you start a new med, when you change the dose of a med, or when you add other medicines to it. You can get side effects when you adjust up or down a medicine. Sometimes you can get what we consider bad effects when you suddenly stop a medicine that shouldn't be abruptly stopped. These are all important things to know, and these should be what people discuss with you when they prescribe these medicines for you. Well, I hope this introductory video was helpful. It's just the beginning. There'll be two others, and the next one will be about how to look up side effects 
rationally. And the one that comes after that is going to tell you about common drug interactions between the medicines we use for migraine and cluster. So stay tuned. Please subscribe to us on your social media. And remember, above all, never give up. There's always something that's going to help. Never give up. There's a way to treat headaches, and you don't need to suffer so much. I'm signing off, and I hope these are helpful. <music>